This is the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson and broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. The X is going up again. Brought to you by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. Geico, 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Mahindra Tractors, get the best seven-year warranty in Texas. And by Albertsons, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Now your hosts, Jeff Cavanaugh and Brad Sham. And welcome everybody to another Victory Monday Cowboys Hour. Welcome to the Omni Frisco. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, ho, ho, ho. Happy Kwanzaa, that's coming up. And... Uh, and, and as long as it's Victory Monday, everybody's smiling. That's right. Everybody's smiling. That's right. And everybody's smiling. Even the guys whose bodies are hurting tonight <laughs> are smiling. And here are two of the biggest and the best. We've got the law firm of Collins and Collins with us tonight. <laughs> Lyle Collins and Malik Collins, thank you guys for coming out. Appreciate hey, it. Thanks for hand. having us. Big hand. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks to all of our guests who have uh, come out. To join us at the Omni Frisco, our regular Monday night 6 p.m. stop during the uh, football season. And thank you uh, for joining us wherever you are on the Cowboys Radio Network. And if you are if you are in the vicinity of the Star and the Omni Frisco right here on the, uh, on the patio of Neighborhood Services, great place. First of all, there's so much Christmas shopping, Jeffrey, right? Oh, all here. the oh, wow. Christmas shopping. All the Christmas shopping. It's right here and will be done at 7 o'clock and... The stores will still be open and accepting money. You could go right over there and get Lucchese. a brand new pair <laughs> of Lucchese, Lucchese, Lucchese boots. boots. Oh, it's I'll right, tell you what. It's right over there. There's so many things right over here. Fans United and the Nike stores over there. So come out and join us. Great libations and uh, food. And uh, we look forward to having you with us. We're uh, looking forward to saying hello to those of you watching us on the DallasCowboys.com uh, stream live. See that little black box right there? And one over there that Jacob put up. Okay. How about that? People are watching <laughs> us all week long on DallasCowboys.com. So uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate you spending part of your uh, part of your day off. Appreciate cool. you having me. You're welcome, Brad. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> yeah. You're <laughs> it's not your day off. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, now, Lyle Collins, he, he apparently is accumulating days off because usually you have to be uh, past your third year yeah. in the NFL to uh, not have to practice and still uh, play and just punish people. <laughs> and and so here you are, nonetheless. I, I kidded Lyle last week about are we to the point yet where you, you just tell him, you know, I'll be good, I'll see you Sunday, I'll come to all the meetings and everything. And he said, no, 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 we're not. And then you did it again. What the heck? What's going on with you? Hey, man, you know, I have such a great uh, support system around me, you know, the doctors, my coaches, the team. You know, everybody care about, you know, your health. So, um, you know, I've just been doing a real, go real good job with just, you know, taking care of, you know, me as a player, just making sure that, you know, I'm doing the right things. You know, going forward, just, you know, not only for right now, but for long term. And, you know, I'm able to get out there on Sundays and go play. So, you know, that's 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 the most important thing. Did, did, have you surprised yourself at all the last couple of weeks? Just not only just playing, but you uh -huh. played well. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm very confident in myself as a player. And I think uh, my coaches feel the same about me. So, um, honestly, just all the preparation and things that we've been able to do from, you know, the moment, uh, uh, training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and all that. Just going through all that to now, uh, it's been a lot of reps that I've taken. So um, now it's just you know making sure that I'm keeping myself uh, mentally sharp so I can go out there and play my best ball. And tell me, true? Did Tyron say, uh, "LC, you really don't need all this practice, man. You, don't <laughs> you just don't have." No, nah, he, he didn't say that, man. <laughs> we know we still have to practice. We still still have to you know continue working on those things. You know, you always got to continue to get better. We uh, we talked to Tyron right here. Was it a week ago? It was a week ago. No, it was last week. We yep. talked to Tyron right here, yeah. and uh, he was he was kind of like a proud papa talking <laughs> about you for the just the amount of discomfort or pain you're having to deal with to not yeah. practice and to go out and do what you did. I think yeah. you know watching you this year get better and better at that job as you get more comfortable with it. How tough is it? To not have those reps during the week and then somehow go out there and have everybody watch and go, man, he's really getting better. I mean, for me, it's actually uh, more of an emphasis on, you know, hey, you know, we're doing everything that we can to make sure my body is right. So 
I got to make sure that I'm staying physically in it, physically all the way to make sure that I can go out there and play my best ball. And, you know, it's a, it's a mental focus each and every rep. You know, you can't take any plays off. You just got to be dialed in every play and, and go out there and play hard. Malik, how come you practicing every day, man? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. I need to see what little cousin. These, these men, these men are these men are locker mates, which is really kind right. of funny because there's other guys with the same last name who don't locker next. In fact, there's two guys with the same last name who are actually blood brothers who don't locker next to each other. And well, they're both trying to spread their wings and make new friends. But the Collinses stick together. They stay together. Probably a good move. That's and, how we do it. I understand. And, but, but he now has, he's not practicing and he's playing and doing great. You, you still out there practicing every day. A little bit. So, <laughs> I mean, well, you have things that hurt Malik? Oh, yeah. My <laughs> uh, Take we, a couple days off. We, yeah. Yes, apparently you don't need to practice to play well. Uh, we, we were talking uh, before uh, Lyle got here about, uh, I asked Malik, I'll ask you again, at this time of year, even as young as you both are, at this time of year, is, is there a day that you wake up and everything's fine, nothing hurts? I'm going to let you go first. Uh, <laughs> maybe this morning, you know, the victory kind of over, overtake. Uh, I think, yeah, I think yeah. the victory definitely is half the pain. So um, you wake up on Monday and you, you won a game. Uh, I think that definitely kind of can take over half the pain. So, you know, but for the most part, you know, you, you just you, know, you, you got to take care of your body. So it's not like something that, you know, it's a, a daily thing. You got you to gotta start way back. I start way back and just getting a routine of doing it over and over again. Uh, LC is first of all. I wish, I wish those of you listening, uh, you go, sometime during the week, go look on uh, the website on DallasCowboys.com because he got this Cheshire Cat grin on his face when he's talking about. It. I just love it. And uh, but but Malik has has been dealing with foot issues all year long. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not a secret. It's been publicized, so I'm not telling anything out of school. And you. You kind of need your feet, don't yeah. you, to, mm-hmm. to be able to get down in a stance and push off. and like, Is this something you just have to play with and just let it get better in the off season? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, just try to really just try to get through practice week just so you'll be healthy for the game. Kind of on a not as – not taking as many days off as LC, but maybe take some reps off. You, know. well, you think it's fair to say that you're tougher than he is? Oh, most definitely. Yeah, exactly. I can see that. Uh, I, I do think it's really interesting, uh, having watched you at Nebraska and knowing what the Cowboys, the reasons that they sort of liked you coming out, and I don't want to talk over anyone's head, so the Cowboys have two defensive tackle spots. You have a three technique and you have a one technique. The one technique is typically the bigger guy, the nose tackle. He's got to wrestle two people. They picked you because of quickness, because of penetration, that sort of three technique spot. Yeah. Then Stephen Paya has to retire. Then was it, did Price get hurt too? Yeah. And suddenly the quick penetrator who has a foot that's hurting gets to move over and mm-hmm. wrestle multiple people at a time. How much of a challenge is that? Uh, it's definitely a challenge knowing that, you know, the amount of work I put in just playing three technique. You know, I never really thought I'd be playing nose. Uh, but, I mean, I, I kind of play it the same way, and that's um, just get off penetration, you know, uh, trying to get the man before he gets me. Mm-hmm. So the role the role doesn't – the job description doesn't change that much going from one to the other? The way I play it, it does Okay. <laughs> it, it's definitely different, though. It's different. Well, how, how is it different for, for people who are never going to experience that? Well, the one technique is like a um, – it's kind of like a run-pass conflict, you know, versus when we're playing cover two, you know, he has to rap versus pass or he has to cover other guys. The three technique, you know, he's the he, – he penetrates. He, he does everything for the defense, you know. He, you know, he's the bell cow. So, you know uh, – this is who the defense is built around. So with the one technique, you know, you just kind of like the cover guy. But I still penetrate from the one technique. So now we got two guys penetrating off the ball. And, you know, we got all four of us coming off the ball. So it makes it a little bit different um, based on past film I've watched from when Marinette was in Tampa and, you know, in Chicago. But uh, I think I think it's kind of coming along the way we all play off each other. Do you ever look at David Irving? 
when when he's out there, when he's not hurt or in concussion program, but when he's out there getting mm-hmm. sacks and you're over here at nose gobbling up blockers, do you look at him and you say, you're welcome, David? No, I don't look at him like that. I, I mean, this, that's, what type of, that's what type of game we play, so... All right, so th- and this is actually one of the things that I think is really interesting about the year you've had because uh, David was in training camp but knew that he was going to not be there for the first four weeks of the year. So you were next to David, then you were next to Stephen Pye, and then he retired because his knee was bad, and he couldn't practice either. And uh, see what happens, you get to watch it. If you don't practice at all, you, just, you have to retire too no, early. Take no, your no. time. It's going really well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but so then, And then you've had... And then you've had different guys next to you playing both roles, different guys that you have to adjust to. Well, how, how have you been able to do that? Um, through practice. That's, that's why practice is important. So, <laughs> you know, uh, All these practice, y'all, everybody <laughs> throwing shots at me. He, no, shots, <laughs> shots. How is it, first of all, you can't have a shot with what you've got. That's not going to happen. Second of all. Neighborhood services. If you, s- yeah, mm-hmm. full no. service. Second of all, sh- how could it po- This is, hey, this so is raw know. admiration. Hey, this boy, is hey. awe. This is we cannot <laughs> believe the greatness that is you. <laughs> I'm just, I just want to say, throw it out there before. I, I was practice. I was at practice every day before I had the little nick nick this season. And, you, know, you you were practice hard. No, you always have. Practice is important, guys. You always have. And uh, <laughs> <I'm seeing laughs> Saturday, huh? I said I don't usually see him till Saturday. <laughs> see, that's what I'm talking about. Now, but but I do think that there are things that that are uh, uh, instructive about the way both of these guys work at their job, and there are there are uh, kids who are off. Uh, on holiday break right now who are listening, who will be watching this uh, streamed on the website, who can get some tips on work ethic from you guys when we come back. And, and, and uh, you, he played guard last year or something. You must have had to go up against it back in the days when he did practice. Yeah, you, yeah we're, we're going to talk a little bit about that. I had to, I had to bring him up. Okay. Oh, All right. Where, you, we're we're going to talk a little bit about that. It's the Monday night. Stop right here at uh, the Omni Frisco at Neighborhood Services. It's the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertsons, with our special guests this week, Malik Collins and Lyle Collins. And we are brought to you in part by Omni Hotel. Next time you travel for an away game, here's how to make the most of it. Stay with Omni Hotels and Resorts. They have 60 premier locations coast to coast with things like world-class spas, championship golf, and great dining. Visit OmniHotels.com to learn more and turn the next away game into a getaway weekend. Omni Hotels and Resorts, the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys. By Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. And by Lucchese Bootmaker, now open at the Star in Frisco. Shop from a variety of world-class handmade cowboy boots as well as all new signature apparel and accessories. Visit their brand new store today and experience the tradition that is... Lucchese Bootmaker will be right back on the Cowboys Hour.
Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson, and broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. Take it. Yes, welcome back. It is the Cowboys Hour radio show. I'm Jeff Kavanaugh alongside the great Brad Sham, and we are lucky enough this week to be joined by two Dallas Cowboys. What you call them? The law firm of Collins and Collins. The law firm of Collins and Collins. Lyle Collins and Malik Collins, and as Brad alluded to uh, in our last segment, if you were tuned in, Lyle Collins has not always been an offensive tackle. I guess at LSU you were an offensive tackle. Mm-hmm. Then you were a guard. Then you were a tackle. So well, let's I was go. A, I was a guard, then a tackle. A guard, actually. then a tackle, mm-hmm. then a guard, then, then a tackle. tackle yeah. Okay. So I want to focus on the third <laughs> stop okay. because that's the one that would have put you at guard with the Dallas Cowboys yeah. and probably across from the man next to you. Yeah. What was your win percentage in practice? Oh, man, it was 100%. 100? <laughs> this was a, he was a young rookie, wet behind the ears, coming in. Easy, really, um, right? You were, you were a veteran in your second year. Yeah, yeah. Second year guy had a little experience on him. So Malik, what was your win percentage? I just can't believe he had come up here and lie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he just, uh, I say at least maybe sixty-five. Oh, now, boy. you don't win them all, but you know, yeah, but most. Home, yeah. Make sure you got a little confidence for the we, game. I'm gonna have to. We gonna have to bring out some cut-ups. Jacob would know. So we can show y'all these plays because you know. know yeah, we have witnesses now. It We're took about him to a while to come around. Okay. It took him a while. Okay. Yeah, he's a good player. All he had was a you know a nice little double punch. You know. One oh, trick, we're not we're not we're not double punch him. One trick pony. You know, you just work. <laughs> when, I double, when I double punch him, he spin around right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know a lot of a lot of people really enjoy your uh, your highlight reel because you as a pulling guard was some of the most entertaining blocking we'd get to see. Those poor secondary yeah, guys. Would get sent. What would you say? About eight to ten yards in oh, the yeah. air, give or take. Yeah. yeah, that was a lot of fun. Is it as fun to do as it is to watch? Because oh, we enjoyed it's so it. So much fun, you know. Because DBs, they don't like to take on offensive linemen, so and linebackers for that for that sense. But when you get up on the, get up on them, and they don't they don't know what they want to do yet, then you just hit them. It's like ah. Uh, it's bad. It's a great. It's great, man. You ever have one just even in practice? Just look, see you come and turn around, and make a U turn. Oh yeah, in practice for sure. They just turn around and just get out of the way. <laughs> oh nice. Which DB is the most afraid of contact on the Cowboys? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you wanna silence at the Cowboy Hour? How about DBs? Yeah, they they, they like contact. We'll ask you. <laughs> it's save it for Sunday. We'll ask you it. We'll ask you it's in the save, break. You know, just now, for Sunday. Malik, what is the equivalent? What's the defensive tackle equivalent of an offensive lineman getting to block a defensive back who's terrified? Like, what can happen over the course of the play where your eyes light up and you're like, "Oh, this is fun." Um, really, just getting off the ball, and uh, if you if you get in the backfield before the before the handoff. Just knowing they're going to show the replay, yeah, over and over before they're ready to be hit or chasing something down on the screen. You ever had a play where you tackle where they do? Because so many people run like the shotgun read option. Have you ever had one where you get there quick enough that you just tackle everybody? Nah, not yet. Okay, not yet. well we're waiting. We're going to anxiously wait. Yeah, because it's going to be a great highlight. So um, you you may be able to tell that these are both men of great depth. Uh, who treat words as though they were paying to use them. And Jason Garrett likes to say that uh, he's never had a conversation with Malik longer than about four words. Hey, Malik, how you doing? Good, Coach. And, and he says that's about all you give him. Is that about right? That's about it. And and do you, what about Coach Marinelli? Is it the same way? No, I talk to Coach Marinelli a little more. You do? Yeah. Okay. Well, what, what gets you talking to Coach Marinelli a little more? I'm with him every day. You know, I see him every day. You know, he's my position coach. You know, he, so much knowledge about the game, my position specific. And, uh, I just want to know so much more of what, what's inside his mind. You ought to uh, just make up like a little uh, 10 or 15 word speech, just about anything. And next time Garrett stops you and says, hey, Malik, how you doing? Just rattle about three sentences off. <laughs> he might just fall right over in a faint yeah, right there on the spot. Yeah. Hey, Coach, it's great to see you. Let me tell you about my weekend. How was yours? You don't hit him with any of that? No, nah, not yet. Not okay. Yet. Uh, the Marinelli factor, you just told us something that I think is really instructive. And this is one of the things I was talking about that young, young guys who are playing the game can get from both of you. And that's your work ethic and your approach to the game now. Now, here you are in your second year, and you, and you just told us that you have watched tape of Coach Marinelli's teams in Tampa and in Chicago. 
to get a little sense of what might be expected of you. When did you start doing that, and why did you start doing that, and what do you look for? Well, I did that in college. Uh, we played the same scheme in college, so you know, our, our my D-line coach in college kind of tried to emulate Coach Marinelli by the way he coached, you know, how he's, gets, how he's hard on his players, uh, even the individual drills we do. So nothing, nothing was new to me. I mean, the pace was new, but... You know, it was it was pretty much the same thing. So uh, watching that film, I mean, I've been watching SAP since I was since like oh three. You know, so about eight since I was about eight years old. So. And, and was Warren SAP the guy you wanted to try to emulate? Yeah, most definitely. So with your uh, with your college, Nebraska, they got a brand new head coach. And I asked you off the mic, but I just like to get your thoughts. Scott Frost is a guy that a lot of us got to watch at yeah. Nebraska, playing quarterback and running all over the place. He's going to be the coach. What do you know about him? Is that exciting as a, as a Nebraska guy? Yeah, most definitely. It's just exciting to see the players excited and to see, you know, the fans excited up there. I don't know too much about him. You know, it wasn't really my era too much, but, you know, I see I see what he's done at UCF. I see what he did at Oregon, you know, and uh, I'm excited to see what he brings to the program. It's really unfortunate, Brad, when at 33 – I feel old. He didn't see Scott Frost. He was after Tommy Frazier. Yeah, 33? I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm getting that. And now I feel like that is incredibly old. I, I'm not even going to talk to you about, okay. about this subject. That's What are you laughing at? <laughs> well, Lyle, where, where does your LSU history begin? What do you remember from LSU? I mean, about. How far back can you go with, with LSU? Just the uh, pl old players? Yeah. Um, man, I'm not that far not back. Not very? Yeah. So many young people in this world. You, you know what's interesting to me, though, is that, um, first of all, let's establish this. Would you each describe yourself, yes or no? There's no wrong answer. Are, Lyle, are you a football fan? Um, yes, I am. Very you like, much. You like to watch it? But I, didn't grow up, I didn't grow up a football fan. So, I mean, I just, over time, playing the game for a while now, Really made me a football fan. Playing it made you a fan. Right. Malik, how about you? Would you call yourself a football fan? Yeah and no. Um, yeah, I, I say yeah. Uh, I mean, I watch it a lot, but not not as much like during the season. So I kind of done lost touch with playing football. You know, I mean, I lost touch with watching football by playing football. So. Yeah, the reason I asked the question is that there, it's it's always interesting to me. Uh, the guys who are football fans and not football fans, and, and w whichever they answer, the way they stay in touch with their college programs. And the more success they have in the NFL, the programs definitely want to stay in touch with them. So does Nebraska, you have Nebraska folks trying to make sure that you're staying involved and staying in touch and maybe coming back from time to time, that kind oh, of yeah, thing? most definitely. How, what do they do? How do they reach out? What do they say? Well, uh... Well, a couple games a year, you know, a lot of Nebraska people will come down, you know, uh, just to see, check out some games, uh, like Facebook posts, like different groups and stuff like that. Um, there's always, through social media a lot, though, just staying in touch through social media. And, and how about LSU? Do they yeah, reach they, out to you? Yeah, they, you know, they send you gear and, you know, send you a bunch of emails and letters and stuff like that. And, and uh, invite you back to a bunch of games. So I, I went back to one this year. Did, does, does Nebraska send you gear? Yeah, they do. Okay. Good. I just want to make sure. Because yeah. I know Tyron, believe it or not, was having a little trouble getting some USC gear. Oh, no. Yes. No. And, uh, of course, they'll be coming here for the Cotton Bowl. They'll be all over him. But, but. So are they, they still trying to use you guys for recruiting, Try to get you to talk to people? Nah. They just per they just promote you. I mean, safely. sometimes they might call you. Hey, can you talk to this guy real quick? <laughs> just but, like with the phone, with him yeah, right with there. Right there. Oh, uh, that's messed up. You can't you say busy? no. Yeah, you, I mean, but that's why you do it, though. Yeah. You know, help a kid out. Now, would that have worked with you when you were being recruited? If that, if if some. I think so. Uh, you know, it was because I when I when I went to LSU, I looked up to an offensive lineman that was there for a while, so. You know, anytime you talk to a guy that's been there and that has done it, you, know, you always kind of, you know, you know, always kind of would listen to him a little more. So, definitely. Now, Malik, would that have worked with you? No. no. Yeah. What What would have worked with you? Uh, what did work with you? I just wanted to know how much I was going to play, you know, and that I had an opportunity to come in and play right away. It was real big for me. Where else did you have a chance to go? 
Uh, I wouldn't really highly recruit it. Um, it's Missouri and Kansas, Nebraska. That's about it. Iowa, late, yeah. Now, Lyle, I have a question for you that I wanted to ask you last week, and I've been holding it this whole time. Okay. I've just been waiting to get you here. All right. In high school, uh huh, you were paving the way for a guy named Jeremy Hill, who you yeah. ended up playing with at LSU, plays yeah. for the Bengals. Yeah. So you had you and Jeremy Hill mm-hmm. on a 3A football team in Louisiana, and you lost in the state quarterfinals. Yes, we did. How? Ah, man. You know, that's, that's still a stinger right there, man. <laughs> you got man. two NFL players on the roster. Man, we had we had about three or four. We had we had some talent on that team, man, and we just couldn't get it done. They couldn't get it done. I don't know why. I mean, every year we would go to the semifinals and lose. It just sucked. We'll feel better after the Super Bowls. <laughs> the Super Bowls will make us feel better. It is the Cowboy Hour here at the Omni Frisco, the Neighborhood Services, supported by Albertsons. We appreciate everybody being here, especially appreciate the law firm of Collins & Collins being with us. And we're brought to you in part by Jack Black Skin Care. Say goodbye to painful razor burn and bumps when you upgrade your shave with Jack Black's pain-free shave system. Now $10 off your order of $50 or more when you visit getjackblack.com slash cowboys. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. And by Albertsons and Tom Thumb, get 10% off your groceries at Albertsons and Tom Thumb every Dallas Cowboy game day when you wear your Cowboys jersey and enter for a chance to win tickets to the next Cowboys home game, courtesy of Albertsons, the official supermarket of the Dallas Cowboys. We're back in a minute with more with Lyle Collins and Malik Collins.